We welcome you guys to worship and pray that God blesses you. If you are visiting today, I'm Pastor Mike. We're glad you can hear with us. Uh, ben and also on our staff will give our announcements today. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, a few announcements this morning. Uh, our fall section of Bible studies kind of concluded this morning. Uh, Pastor Mike will still be leading some sessions uh, in the new year, uh, starting in January. On the 9th and 16th, there is a question-answer session. Uh, that'll take place downstairs, and that will, one will be led by Pastor Mike Paulison, then the other one by Pastor Mike Hiller. Um, there on the square table as you exit the sanctuary, there's a basket with some pieces of paper. So feel free to jot down a few questions. Uh, the first one that was in there is, how do we properly welcome Pastor Bobby? Um, and that's a very valid question. So think of some questions that you may have, jot them down in there, and then take some time on the 9th and 16th uh, to come to uh, that Q&A time during the Bible study time. And uh, Kids crew wrapped up today. Uh, there will be information on how we're going to kick that off in the new year. Uh, same thing with our student studies. Today is the last day for our sweet treat sales. Uh, the fundraiser is for the National Youth Gathering in uh, 2022, this upcoming summer. So the students that you're buying treats from are the ones that are directly being benefited. Uh, today it will be at the coffee bar where you can buy those sweet treats, not downstairs. So if you feel the need to get those steps in before you buy all the sugar and whatnot, just walk down the hallway, look at the pretty lights that the youth did in the youth room, then come back, you're good to go. Um, but again, that goes directly towards the students going to National Youth Gathering. Christmas Eve services are at 3, 5, and 7. Uh, there were some cards that were spaced out on some chairs. There will be some at the back that you can grab as well. Hand them to a neighbor. Give them to a family member or a friend. Invite people to come join our family, uh, our Trinity family, on Christmas Eve. Again, 3, 5, and 7. And then we have a Christmas Day service at 10 a.m. We usually line the driveway with luminaries on Christmas Eve. I say we. Mr. Kelly Zunker heads that up. Um, I've been able to help him light them one year, which takes a while. Uh, we have a very long driveway. It takes a lot of luminaries. He does all the sidewalks as well, so it does take that small army or that small team. If you are interested in helping him build them or set them out and or light them, contact him. His information is in the TLC, either the printed version that can be found at the back or in the online version that is emailed out on Fridays. Uh, if you can't find his information, you can contact the church office and we can get it to you. Uh, but he needs all the help he can get. More hands make it go a little bit quicker. Uh, and it really does make this area look beautiful on Christmas Eve. Mark your calendars for January 8th, 2022, which is just a few weeks away. Uh, Chili Chili Bonfire. This is our second annual Chili Chili Bonfire. Uh, we had to miss last year, but we are very excited to kick it off again this year. There is a chili contest beforehand, uh, $20 per entry, and all the proceeds go to either the Franktown Fire Department or their charity of choice. Um, last time, we had 20 different entries. If you make a dynamite chili or even a mediocre chili and you want to sign up, do so. Uh, if both of you uh, if, if multiple of you in the family make chili, then instead of having the discussion of, ah, oh, which one should we do? Both of you enter, or all three of you enter. Make it a family-friendly competition. See who wins. Put some money on it. Whatever works, right? Um, can we make that big of a fire? If there's <laughs> snow on the ground, yes. No. Um, as of right now, we will not have a fire out in the field. Uh, the fire will depend on how much snow we get. If there's a lot of snow on the ground, we'll have a pretty big fire. We invite the Franktown Fire Department out. They actually light the fire, and then as they're able, hang out with a few of their trucks on site. Uh, if there's a little bit of moisture, we'll have a little campfire out there. Um, we may go up to the mount if needed since that's an established fire pit, or if we can't have an actual wood-burning fire, we will set a couple of propane fire pits out in the parking lot so we can still make some s'mores that evening. Um, so again, mark your calendars for January 8th for the Chili Chili Bonfire. If you have not checked your mailbox recently or if you have no idea if you have a mailbox or what that even means here, 
uh, just walk slightly down the hallway just past the water fountain in the nursery and look for your last name. If you don't have a mailbox and would like one, give a note to myself or one of our elders and we'll make sure that that gets taken care of. Um, if you're newer and have never checked it before, they are in alphabetical order, I believe. So you can go back and find your mailbox. Um, there's giving envelopes in there, some Christmas cards. I've noticed a couple of candy canes in some of them. Uh, so go check your mailboxes after service. And if you don't have one and want one, let us know. Now there's a short video for Advent Conspiracy before we keep on moving. For some reason, the on button is not going. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> So uh, why we're waiting for this, just so you know, uh, the whole concept of Advent conspiracy we've been going through and doing is that we tend to rush through Advent just to get to Christmas, and we don't slow up to take time. And, of course, especially in America, our consumerism in Ad Advent, uh, and consumerism in America is off the charts. And so we challenge you to, to as a family, decide a gift that you could do or uh, not have this year, and instead give that money to the church and we're going to provide water to a community. And we actually, uh, just so you know, uh, you can give yourself, we've already raised more than the $650. So give yourselves a hand. <clears throat> and I know the community. They're personal friends of mine, the 80 families that you're going to be giving water to. They are very thankful for it. And anything above, we're just going to meet other needs of that same community in Haiti. Is it working or? All right. Let's those who gather with us in worship this morning. Good morning. Good to see you. 
Good morning, girls. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, Rebecca. Good to see you guys. Hey, girls. <coughs> We invite you to have a seat as we light the next Advent candle. Is that one? God has given us many gifts. Sometimes we try to count our blessings, and the list is always long. But of all his gifts, none is greater than the gift of his son, Jesus. In giving us his son, he gave us himself. Today we will light the last purple candle on the fourth Sunday in Advent to remind us of God's gift. We can go on. Oh, wait, don't show this one first. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 says this. God, who first ordered light to shine in darkness, has flooded our hearts with his light. We now can enlighten men only because we can give them knowledge of the glory of God as we see it in the face of Jesus Christ. Let's stand up to worship together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, this beautiful day. Lord, in just a few days, we're going to celebrate with family or friends or um, acquaintances, maybe even working people that we uh, uh, that we work with, Lord, to celebrate your coming to earth the first time. But today, Lord, we just pray and we thank you that you're already here, that you're in the midst of us, and that we have this chance to lift your name up. Help us to do that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
You know, it was actually in the first few centuries that the church involved in its worship, and it was even in, there's evidence in the catacombs, in the caves, that even the first few centuries, they started doing this time of confession. So the concept that we would go together before God corporately goes back almost 2,000 years. You're doing what your forefathers did. You're doing what the very first Christians did. So I invite you, go before God in confession with me. Father, we lay our hearts before you today. And as we enter into this Christmas week, we know, Lord God, everything we do is tainted with our sin, our failures, our weakness. 
because we've been birthed into that. But we thank you, Lord God, that you don't count that against us. That this whole season is about a gift that you gave for the purpose of our forgiveness. In the recognition that we are sinners. Not because we sin. We sin because we're sinners. We were birthed into this by the frailty of this human flesh. So God, we lay our lives, our mistakes, our faults, our inability to live up and do the things that we should do every time before your throne. And we ask now in the quiet of our hearts to ask, we ask you for forgiveness. This season's all about gifts. And the greatest gift that you receive was birthed in a manger. And acknowledge before you and stand before you, your sins have been forgiven. In the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You guys can have a seat. We invite the kids up for the children's message. How's it going, guys? Good. So, I must say, I absolutely, positively love Christmas time. I love it. I love looking at the lights. Um, I love seeing candles and wreaths and Christmas trees and everything else set up. I love Christmas so much. But a lot of times we can start to get distracted by all those things, and we can forget the true meaning of Christmas, right? Um, the, <laughs> we were driving around looking at Christmas lights the other night and we pulled up to this one house and it had so many cool lights and we saw this beautiful nativity scene. So Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus in their front yard and it was beautiful. And Rudolph was there looking at Jesus and Frosty the snowman was there standing behind Mary. And I don't think that's actually how it happened. <laughs> and so sometimes we can get distracted by the things in the world, right? We can get distracted by Frosty's magical hat or our wish list to Santa or Rudolph's shiny red nose. But it's, Im it's important for us to keep our focus on Jesus, right? All right, so go ahead and get your hand Bibles and open up to Acts 17. So, all right, and it's Acts 17, and it's verses 23 and 24. All right, and... Keep them still. I think you're done turning pages. Verses 23 and 24. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. What, therefore, you worship as unknown, I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man. And so... That verse is telling us that these people were worshiping, but they didn't necessarily know what they were worshiping, right? And he, Paul is the writer here, and he reminds them that, Paul's not the writer, um, he reminds them that Jesus isn't just found in the temple. Jesus isn't just found here in this church building. He can be found absolutely everywhere. And the cool thing about this is, most of us know why we're here. Most of us know what Christmas is about, and that's Jesus, right? But not everybody does. Maybe some of our family or some of our friends don't know that. And so we remind them, we can remind them that Christmas is all about Jesus and his birth and what he came to the world to do. Now, the part that I love about this is it reminds us that Jesus isn't just in the temple. Jesus isn't just in the church, right? So we're going to do a little activity, okay? Okay. There are ways that we can find Jesus everywhere, in everything, okay? So turn and look at these four lovely candles to my left, behind some of you, to some of your right. There's a light on top of the candle, right? Like it's burning. It's a light. 
And that can remind us that Jesus is the light. Jesus is our light, right? No matter how dark or dim things may seem, Jesus is the light. Uh, What's underneath the tree over here on this side? Presents, gifts, right? Jesus is the ultimate gift. And so even just looking at it can be a reminder that Jesus is the best gift ever. So now it is your turn, and we're going to do this activity with a candy cane. All right, so look at the candy cane. Use your thinker. of How can a candy cane remind us of Jesus? How can a candy cane make us think of Jesus? What are your ideas? Okay, it's got red, and that's like the blood of Jesus, right? That reminds us of the sacrifice that he did for us. The curve shape is like a shepherd's staff, and Jesus is the best shepherd ever. What else? Yeah, the white is like, it's Jesus' purity or it's the washing of our sins. It's clean, right? It's pure. And that's also a really cool reminder. Are candy canes hard or soft? Hard. And hard like a rock sometimes, right? But that can remind us that Jesus is our rock. Jesus is our foundation. That's pretty cool. Now, what if I do this? What letter? A J for Jesus, right? And so we can do that with so many different things. We just have to ask Jesus to open our eyes and open our hearts to seeing him a little bit easier. And that's pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to close in prayer, and then I'm going to give each of you guys a candy cane, okay? Um, And that way you can be reminded that Jesus loves you and peppermint is delicious, okay? (laughs) So go ahead and fold your hands and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for showing us all the different reminders of your love. Help us to share the true meaning of Christmas with everybody. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. So grab a candy cane, and once you get one, you guys can go back to your seat. Also, in early service, someone said it could look like a cross. If you break the top off, it could definitely be a cross. Grab one and go back to your seats. morning. Please stand for the readings. Our first reading is taken from Luke chapter 2 verses 21 to 40. And at the end of eight days when he was uh, circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons... Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he became and he came in the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, 
he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all people a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed and a word will pierce through your own soul also so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phenel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin. And then, as a widow until she was 84, she did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at the very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And then, and when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee and to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Our second reading is taken from the book of Acts 17, verses 22 to 31. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Arapogues, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that you are, that you in every way are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God in the hope that they might feel their way towards him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of our own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The time of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which we, he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. We confess our common Christian faith with the reading of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God.
stay in heaven and take care of all the hands of the Father. When you look on your throne of glory, Christ said to where you go, your kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together in this world to be glorified. We spoke by the prophet. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied in you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, uh, for as we went enter into this Christmas week with the greatest gift in the world that you've given to us. Be present with us, Lord God. Help us not to focus so much on everything else we have to do this week, but instead, Lord, to be focused on you. And remember the true gift. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, what did you have to do for Christmas this year? You get everything done? Uh, I got to tell you, this is the, uh, I think this is the first time in 10 years that I've had to preach Christmas Eve services. Since that's not my calling anymore, I, I'm usually just like you, sitting in a pew. And this year... You've got three Christmas Eve, one Christmas Day, one the next day. You may kill me this week. (laughs) I've never had to write so many Christmas sermons in my life. You know, Christmas has actually changed for us over the last couple years. If you remember years ago, like on Black Friday, you'd go to the store, and there would be a line out the door, down the block, and you'd be standing there for hours. You know, malls would be packed leading up to it. Now all you got to do is go online and push a button. So that part actually is probably a, a little bit better for us in the sense that not all the commotion, but there seems like there's hundreds and thousands of things to do. You know, since we have so many services, we've kind of looked at through Advent kind of Christmas from different perspectives, and we'll continue to do that this week. But I, I want to take you to a much lesser known story it's actually after christmas it's 40 days after christmas which is okay because these two characters you could actually maybe i should start selling them and make them because you can put them in your activity sets because you already put the wise men there and they don't come for two more years hello i mean the christmas star is two years later but we part it right in the middle of it we kind of compact everything which is fine but we overlooked this one in Luke chapter 2. So I encourage you to open your Bibles and follow along with the story. It has to do with waiting for the the birth of Jesus. And and two characters specifically. One is an elderly man by the name of Simeon. Now the Bible says, or the tradition is that he was living in the temple, that both of these two characters lived in the temple, which is odd because you didn't typically live there. So we don't know if it meant they actually lived on the temple proper or if they lived uh, outside of and simply came to the temple every day. You know, it's been a tradition that says Simeon was a priest. The only thing is it actually never says in the Bible he's a priest uh, at all. But he goes and he lives in the temple and he's waiting with expectation to see a promise that God had placed upon his heart. God said, you will not die until you see the Messiah. So every day, he walks in the temple. He's probably looking at every child coming in. Is this the one? Is this the one? Is this the one? Now, there's also an 84-year-old woman by the name of Anna. Now, the Bible does say that she's a widow. So that's pretty tough on her in this culture because, remember, women didn't have a lot of rights, and you had even less if you didn't have a husband because the husband provided for you. So now she doesn't have anybody to cover her or take care of her. She probably got fed like the priest did. She probably got fed from people coming to the temple. 
Now, actually, I'm not sure what she's doing in the temple, because if you study the characteristic and the makeup of the temple, there's a temple of the courts, there's a temple of women, and, and then there's the inner court, and then the Holy of Holies. Women actually didn't go into the temple. They only went as far as the court of the women. But for some reason, she's inside the temple, and she has the same expectation. She is waiting to see the Son of God. It's interesting, her, word, her name, Anna, means grace. But what's interesting is that they call her in Luke chapter 2, they, says that she, they said that she's a prophetess. Which is interesting because in Malachi is the last time God spoke. So it's 400 years since God said a word. How is she a prophetess? I don't know. Maybe she's remembered because of what's said in this scripture section that they call her prophetess. But it's someone who it's not always a prophet predicting the future. Sometimes it's ever someone who speaks on behalf of God and has a word for you. Uh, that's a little bit tough for us to understand. We're not going to get into that right now. But sometimes uh, go read my book. You'll read a story where somebody actually walked in my life and said, you know, and we've talked about that. Don't take a ride because it mean your life. That person was acting as a prophet in my life. So Anna and, and Simeon are in the temple, and they're simply waiting, waiting for God to show up and do something with expectant hearts. You know, when my girls were young, the questions would start about a week or two before Christmas, Right? Dad, when's Christmas? Dad, how many days are left for Christmas? Dad, this, dad, that, uh, getting more and more excited. <coughs> and, but Simeon and Anna's hearts are just like that. They're looking and expecting God to do something in their day. You know, sometimes I wonder if we expect God to do something. Because many times you get what you expect. Let me ask you a question. When you come, came this morning, did you expect to see God? When you came this morning, did you expect God to do something in your life? When you come to Christmas Eve services or Christmas services, no matter where you go this week, what do you expect? Do, do you expect the Christmas story read? Well, we got you covered. You expect to sing Christmas hymns? We got it. We got it nailed. You expect Pastor Mike to preach a short sermon? You're out of luck. But with all those expectations, are you expecting to meet God? Are you expecting God to do something in your life this week? You know, I often get asked because of being a missionary, why does it seem that God does more amazing things on the mission field? Why do you have such amazing stories of the movement of God in people's lives and in your own life? And I don't think it's because we're missionaries. and I don't think because we work in different parts of the world is the answer. Because I think God works in the same way all around the world. But we don't see him because we don't expect to see him. You see, in Haiti, when someone gets hurt, I'll give you an example. Four weeks ago, a girl got hurt on our site. She started bleeding. We had to rush around to get her to a hospital. The truth is, because of the gas prices, hospitals were shut down. And Rose, a 16-year-old, almost died before we got her there. But one of the things that we are trained to do, you help everybody, and you start going, but from minute one, we start praying. And when, we, when they left to go find a hospital, I had 20-plus orphans praying until they found someplace. Because they expected God to save her life. They expected God to do something. Now, guys, this is not some kind of formula. Two weeks, I, I stood up here, and, and during the prayer of the church, I prayed, God, I'm going to be bold right now, and I'm going to ask I'm going to pray that the missionaries get home who were kidnapped before Christmas. Now, I can't tell you why God answered that prayer this week. It wasn't just because I was bold to ask. 
There's other times I've prayed and God said no or God didn't do what I wanted him to do. I mean, we get frustrated that God's not a cosmic bellhop, right? But sometimes it's that expectation of, God, I believe you're going to do something here. And yes, it's true in a third world country where we don't have the medical facilities. There's times I have to expect God to show up. Or else nothing's going to change in this. And sometimes the situation is so great out of my hands, it's got to be in the hands of God. But it's the same truth in your lives. What are you expecting this Christmas? I know we have some kind of expectation about the gifts under the tree and what we might have inside of those. But what about your journey right now? Your faith journey. Do you expect God to show up in that faith journey this week? Do you expect to have a moment where you really grasp the holy presence? When, when God actually becomes real to you and your family and changes you forever? Because I think at times we don't get it. And we don't see it because we don't believe it's going to happen. You know, in our culture, we used to have high regard for those people as, <coughs> for people as they grew older. We used to look at them with wisdom in certain cultures, like in Africa, they, st in Africa well, in Africa they do as well, but I was thinking in Alaska. They have respect as people grow up and, and We've kind of lost some of that. You know, you grow older, a lot of us, like me, start to lose your hair. Your eyes start to fade, so we, a lot of us end up wearing glasses. Your memory's not the same. You start putting weight in the middle around your, your stomach. And I read one study that says from age 46 on, 100,000 brain cells die a day. That doesn't give you a lot of hope. I, I got to tell you, I'm like, wow, there's a lot of my brain dead already. But it is to, to older people who saw what nobody else saw. They saw something significant that everybody else would miss, and all of Israel was, were already praying, praying for the Messiah to show up. They were all praying for it. And they missed it. There's seven, a little over seven billion people in the world right now. On Christmas Eve, about half of all the people in the world will, will go to church. That and Easter, of course, are the highest attended days of the year. Half the world will miss it this week. And the majority of those going to church, they'll show up, they'll sing the Christmas hair, uh, carols, they'll read the Christmas story, but they'll miss it. The nation of Israel still misses it. But these two people, elderly people, are every day looking with expectation. And it says, on 40 days after the child was born, they go to the temple. Now, the reason for 40 days is because Mary was finally clean. You see, after having a child in the Jewish faith for seven days, she had to cut herself off from everybody else because she's considered unclean. And then she doesn't go out for 40 days because she has to go the entire cycle of becoming clean in their faith before they can go. So on the very first day that Mary's considered clean because of all the blood in childbirth, they go to Jerusalem. And they come to the temple. They're walking into the temple. And this old man gets up. And he picks, he takes the baby probably like he blessed thousands of babies before. And as soon as he takes the child, the Spirit of God speaks to his heart. 
And as soon as the Spirit of God speaks to his heart, all of a sudden, peace just flows over him from head to toe. And he realized, this is it. This. And then he says those words some of us older Lutherans remember. We call it the nunc dominus. And it's actually the Latin for the first couple words. Now I can depart in peace. And the word now in the Greek means a precise moment in time. At this moment, he's saying, I can die. I can go. I have seen everything I based my life and my hope on. In this moment, I am holding in my hands. I can die. Because my life is fulfilled. Of course, then he says some pretty powerful words to Mary. He says, now I can die and my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared. And then he looks at Mary and says, behold, this child's appointed for the fall and rising of many. This child is destined for the fall and rising of many. Do you know that almost every major religion in the world, in fact, every major religion in the world, acknowledges Jesus as someone significant. They acknowledge his prophet. They acknowledge that somehow he's a prophet of God. He was somebody special. But they stumble over the fact that he's God. They stumble that somehow flesh can capture God. The Bible says that God is so large that the world cannot even contain him. And yet you and I say, that little child is God. Seems counter scripture to me. You see, if you come to this with just your mind, you're going to miss something. If you're coming to this and you have to have all your questions answered, you're going to miss something. If you're coming to this and you have to understand how does, why does evil exist in the world and what's the answer to evil, you're going to miss something. If you're going to have to wonder, well, I don't understand all of creation and how this happened. If you have to have all those things answered, you're going to miss something. Because something's happened here that goes beyond the rational into the unrational. In fact, there's a mystery so wonderful and profound that it goes beyond the cognitive into the realms of the mysterious. In other words, you and I have to come and accept mystery. You ready to do that? Are you ready to come and accept something that you cannot always understand? I got to tell you, for me, that's a breath of fresh air. Because if I could understand everything, that means that I could manipulate God. That means that God is of my creation. I want a God who's bigger than me. I want a God who I don't completely understand. Because just by nature, that is God. What you're cel- you and I are celebrating Christmas is so beyond what you and I can rationalize. We either bow our knee and accept it, or we're not ready to accept it. Let me go back a slide here. Because what we're talking about has nothing to do with age. It's got to do with our hearts. And and for all that you're going to get this Christmas, for all the presents you're going to wrap, unwrap, and the exciting things that you're going to see, are you ready to experience Jesus Christ anew and receive his gift? Or are you still stumbling over Jesus? That still may be you. That's okay. If you're still trying to figure this thing out, I'll tell you what, I'll keep praying for you because the Spirit of God is the one who reveals it to you, not me. Simeon said, this child is destined to call the f- cause the fall and the rising of many. And he's Mary, your soul is going to be pierced also. 
which is interesting because Judaism says that the Messiah was going to come and be a conquering political hero. There is no foundation or no, nothing in the history of Israel that said they understood prior to Jesus the nature of a suffering Messiah. And yet somehow this older man who's never been taught that, as soon as he holds the baby, understands that. The Spirit of God revealed it to him. And so here's my challenge, guys. I believe the Spirit of God has something to reveal to you this Christmas. Well, I'm saved. I've gone to church forever. I know all the story. I don't don't care. I believe the Holy Spirit's got something for you to be revealed to you. So my prayer is, somewhere this week, maybe it's with family around a table. Maybe it's with your kids. May you rediscover that this gift was for you. This gift was for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand for prayer, guys. Father, we thank you for the love that you've given us in your son. Lord, no matter where we're at in our faith journeys, may this Christmas be about you and experiencing your love. Father, we pray that you'd be with those who need a touch from your hand. Continue to be with Bill and Kathy. And Lord, as I, I saw Bill, Father, as he goes through those struggles and issues at the end of life, let your presence be felt with him. God, lay your hand of healing upon Steve Ellis with his eyes and Larry as he goes through recovering from back surgery and Larry White recovering with his hip. And for Danny, Lord, we thank you that Danny is back in the uh, rehab center and moving forward now. Be with Mary Jo Faringer, Lord God, to heal her as she overcomes pneumonia. And again, Father, for other members of our church who are at home today struggling with COVID, we ask that you would reach out your holy right hand and restore them, Father. Bless them. Hold them in your hands, God. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. On the night when Christ is betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Every time you take this, remember me. Same manner also he took the cup after he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it. And gave to them, saying, Take and drink ye all of it. This is a new covenant, cup, covenant pour, blood poured out for the new covenant for the forgiveness of all your sins. Every time you take this, remember me. Come now and receive the gifts of God for the people of God. You may be seated.
pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face from his throne shine upon you. May he look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. We sing together.
Well, I'm going to go get a break before Christmas Eve. I'll see you then, but if you are traveling, we pray God's blessings on you and that you have a blessed Christmas. Go in his peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.